To enable.org presents mathematical literacy, different representations of the same relationship. Okay, when we represent relationships, we mostly start with word problems. And that is a bit of a shock to us. So now I can sing do 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 do. Okay, so this is the word problem. Tabu earns 100 rand per day plus 20 rand for every pair of shoes he sells. Calculate how much Tabu can earn per day if he sells n amount of shoes per day. Now we're going to attempt to take away the shark from your word problem and turn it into a can of bullshits. Okay, so let's first start by making a table. Right, so let's look at this problem. Um, right, so let's get a pen. If Tabu sells no shoes, he will still get this hundred rand. But he will earn no extra commission, so he will earn naught times 20 rand, which is naught rand. So he will only get the hundred rand. If Tabu sells one pair of shoes, he will earn 100 rand plus 1 times 20, which is 120 rand. If Tabu managed to sell two pairs of shoes during a day, he will earn he will earn 100 rand plus 2 times 20, which is 40 rand. So he will earn 140 rand. If Tabu managed to sell three pairs of shoes, he will earn the 100 rand plus 3 times 20 rand, which is 60 rand. And that gives us 160 rand. So every time we take the 100 rand and we add a multiple of 20 to that 100 rand to get the different amounts that he will earn during the day or for a day's work. Okay, so this is the table. For no shoes sold, he will get a hundred rand. If he managed to sell five pairs of shoes, he will get two hundred rand for that day's work. So, how many sh uh, shoes will he have to sell? Or oh, sorry, if he sells any amount of shoes, so an unknown amount of shoes, how much money will he earn? Okay, so let's quickly look at it. We're going to now get the equation. What we do is every time we add the 100 rand and the multiple of 20. Multiple, remember multiple is times. So the equation will be the amount that he earned is this 100 rand plus the amount of shoes that he sell of the amount of pairs of shoes times 20. So let's introduce the variables A and N. So A is the amount that he earns plus the 100 rand plus N times 20 and that is our equation. So if we complete the table that N is as with for the n amount of shoes, he will earn 100 rand plus n times 20. So what is the dependent and what is the independent variable? When we look at the equation of Tabu's earning per day, a is equal to 100 plus n times 20. The amount that Tabu earned per day, A, is dependent on the amount of pairs of shoes that he sells per day. Because if he sells no shoes, he will earn only 100 rand. But if he sells a lot of shoes, he will earn much more per day. So A is a dependent variable because it is dependent on the amount of shoes that he sells, so therefore n is the independent variable. 
Okay, here is, is just in writing. A, the money is dependent on N, the amount of shoes that he sells. So N is independent and A is dependent. On a graph, where do the variables go? Okay, so on any line graph, and what is a line graph? A line graph is any graph that can be drawn with a pen or a pencil and does not need any coloring in. Well, that is a very strange definition, but let's quickly look at graphs that needs coloring in. The first one is a bar graph, so this is a bar graph. The second one is a pie chart, and the third one is sort of like a, a area graph. So these are examples of things that are not line graphs, but a line graph, we simply just draw the axis and the rest we draw with a pen or a pencil. So that is an example of a line graph. So on a line graph, the independent variable is plotted on the horizontal axis. So this is our axis and that there is the horizontal axis. And the dependent variable is here on the vertical axis. Okay. Okay, so remember independent variable. So in this case, amount of shoes, but often amount of days, uh, amount of children when we determine the price, uh, amount of uh, cookies that we sell, etc. That is the independent variable. And often the dependent variable is the price that you will pay for something or the amount that you will earn, etc. Okay, so now let's draw this graph. Right, remember, when we do a graph that represents a story, we have to put a heading. Okay, remember when we do a, a presentation in front of a board of directors or in front of a panel of judges, we need to add a, a heading because if one member of the audience fall asleep or maybe they show up late, they need to immediately know what this graph is about if they look up. Okay, so this graph is about Tabu's salary. The independent variable, which in this case is the amount of shoes, goes onto the horizontal axis. And the dependent variable, which in this case is the amount of money that he earns, which is dependent on the amount of shoes that he sells, goes onto the vertical axis. And now we plot that. If he sells n no shoes, he doesn't earn no money, he earns a hundred rand. So there's our first point. If he earn, sells one pair of shoes, he will earn 120 rand. If he sells two pairs of shoes, he will earn 140 rand. If he sells three pairs of shoes, he will earn 160 rand. If he sells four pairs of shoes, he will earn 180 rand. If he sells five pairs of shoes, it will be 200 rand. So do you see that it looks like this is a perfect straight line? So let's see if we connect that, what will happen? Do you see that? A perfect straight line. And there it is. Now, Tarpa can see if if he wants to earn 300 rand during the day, he will have to sell ooh, ooh, 10 pairs of shoes. Right, so this is something Tabu can look forward to. Thank you.